you might be thinking about moving money from Hong Kong to the United Kingdom. But you have to think about foreign exchange and the companies that you use. So should you exchange your money now or should you wait a little while? Go check out this video as I and Chenji discuss this very subject. Uh, so one of the things that people need to think about when they're moving from Hong Kong to the UK is foreign exchange. Um, and currently it's showing there on the 3rd of February uh, 2022, I just noticed it's in the American date format there, uh, that it's showing at uh, $10.56 for, for a pound. So. Uh, Chenji, people moving from Hong Kong to uh, the UK, what people, when they're looking at this kind of chart, what should they make of it? Um, well, obviously, like, uh, thank you some of the question, uh, first of all. Um, so you can see it's 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 not just one simple straight graph, is it? And a lot of people are trying to time in terms of when to come over, sort of to make it. And especially when if you buy, if you're purchasing a house and you're looking at a scale of you know, in the hundreds of thousands, perhaps even in the millions, Finding the right time really is quite important, and it's important to actually have an idea of you know what is actually a good time. Um, but you know, for a lot of people, they put too much sort of stress and concern about you know where where things are going in terms of the exchange market. In my opinion, someone who's lived here, you know, just sort of you know, well, um, just just live with it, just live with it. And actually, um, as someone who still has foreign credit cards and you know bank accounts um, in US dollars mainly in the in, in the US. What I tend to do is I look at I look at the graph, uh, look at the currency exchange, and I you know if actually the great uh, the, uh, the British pound is appreciating, I start using more of the money that I make here in the UK. If the pound is actually depreciating, um, then I start to actually use some of my foreign credit cards to pay for things. Um, I know in Hong Kong, for example, there are still a lot of, there are still credit card providers that have zero foreign transaction fees. Uh, which means and a relatively good um, transaction rate as well. Um, so sometimes it could be sensible to keep a bank account or a credit card open in your home country and sort of strategically use it as you live your lifestyle in the UK, which I found very helpful in my case, for example. Yeah, I, I think that one of the things I would always say to anyone that is looking to open several bank accounts, which I have as well, um, and I follow suit with Chenji, it's just be careful that you might need a new wallet because you've all of a sudden you've now got 20 cards instead of the usual two or three and that can be quite a task to manage i can assure you uh Chinji, I, when people are talking about bringing money over uh you could easily be let's let's say put this in a politically friendly way but you could be paying over the odds in terms of low exchange rates or paying high commissions to shops or banks um, what what should people want to do if they need to transfer maybe let's say five thousand pounds versus a hundred thousand uh, pounds equivalent? Mm. A really good question again, Simon, because you know it's it, the foreign exchange system is actually very very let's just say unregulated because you know who can regulate this? It's different currencies, different government. Nobody can actually regulate it. So that's why there are a lot of you know to put in simply sharks out there who try to take advantage. On the one side, you have actually some of the bigger banks, not saying they're sharks, but you know they can take advantage of the brand and their sort of you know stability to charge higher rates, be it in the form of you know uh, more transaction fees or basically less lower transaction rates. So there's two ways how they can actually um, increase the cost uh, that you can you know, for you as a as a as a consumer to uh, to transfer currency across. Um, on the other side, you have a lot of people who are actually very, again, you know, who don't actually have any currencies behind them. You might look at them and say, oh, this is a dirt cheap rate. But actually, they were, they're just scamming out of your money. You get transferring somebody who's completely unknown, unregulated, and there's no recourse to actually any, to get your money back. So really, my recommendation is to find trustworthy trust, trustworthy platforms. There's a lot of things out there. And if you, if you need any recommendations, feel free to you know, approach to Simon. You know, Simon works a lot with uh, in this regard. I do as well. So you know, ask us for a few platforms and just pick and choose, really. It's an open market. You know, compare the market and get the best rate available uh, for you. Perfect. Anything to add, Nigel? Yeah, well, just one thing that is, you know, people who are looking at exchange rates in terms of timing their move to the UK, my advice would be separate your investment decisions from a decision to make this move to the UK. And the reason for that is that 
Um, you know, there is political uncertainty. We don't know how long the BNO visa program will be open or whether there'll be changes or what might happen. So whilst the opportunity is there, um, you know, we're recommending take it up now, get yourself to the UK. And if you've got investment decisions to make, then you know, they can be made in terms of a, a separate decision to the one about where you're going to be living. Mm, that's a, actually, that's a really interesting point, Nigel, because I recall um, my brother-in-law uh, who was, uh, had some money in Cyprus and he put the money over there for, for I think, for, for reasons because he wanted to, to buy a house or something. And uh, Cyprus turned around to him as a country and said, well, we're going through some uh, uh, unrest. We need to uh, harvest all the money that we have in the country. Um, so you can take 60% uh, of your money now or have the risk of not having your money at all. Uh, and he opted for the 60% very worried about what's going to happen. I mean, could that happen, particularly, you know, Hong Kong is leaving Hong Kong to the UK, leaving money in Hong Kong, but then China taking control. Is there any risk at all? Well, I, I don't particularly know what the what the Chinese government are going to do, but we do know that at present, um, you know, they have a very negative approach to or response to what the UK government has has done and opening the BNO program. So, um, you, you know, so. I, you know, with, without wanting to speculate, you know, the, 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 the position of the Chinese government is one of uh, negativity towards what, what's going on. And so from that point of view, um, yeah, you know, we don't know what might happen. And, and, and that may well be the case. No, it's, it's good the viewpoints on that. Um, but uh, thank you guys for, for your insights. I do hope that you enjoyed that video. Please don't forget to press the like button on this video if you found it useful and subscribe so that you do not miss any future videos. But please don't stop there. We have plenty more content for you to watch. And I think that this video is the one that you should watch next.